I think we live in a world right now where television is actually better than movies. What's going on guys, I'm Chris and welcome back to another video. So today I'm doing my top 10 favorite TV shows of all time. Now I have made this video once on the channel, but I went back and rewatched some of that and I was like, I disagree with this list. I want to change some things around. I've watched new TV shows since then. I feel like this would be a fun one to redo every year or so because I'm watching new TV shows all the time, old and new. But before I give you guys my top 10 favorite TV shows of all time with some honorable mentions, make sure to hit that like button, comment down below your favorite shows of all time, and make sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell as I have tons of videos coming very soon. So I actually have a good bit of honorable mentions. I'm just going to wrap of those off real quick. So the honorable mentions I have are You, How I Met Your Mother, The Office, Star Wars The Clone Wars, Star Wars Rebels, The Mandalorian, and That 70s Show. I love all those shows for different reasons, but they just missed the cut for my top 10. So starting this list off at number 10, we've got Ted Lasso, the Apple TV Plus original show that I recently watched for the first time this month. It's only two seasons long, and it's only supposed to be three. They're saying the final season's gonna come out later this year, maybe in the fall. But regardless, this show is the definition of feel-good escapism. Every time I watch watch an episode, it's so heartwarming, refreshing, and almost purity. Like, this feels like such just a pure, joyful, happy show that I can't help but be engulfed into it every time I watch it. The first season's 10 episodes. I watched that in two days. The second season is 12 episodes, and I spread that one out a little more. I think season one is stronger than season two, but Ted Lasso's a lovable character. You've got great characters across the board. He's here. He's there. He's everywhere. Roy Kent. Roy Kent. There's quotable moments, lovable characters, intense soccer games or football, if you will. And overall, it's just a fun show that is the definition of feel good. Number nine on my list is going to be Barry, the HBO show that's three seasons long that stars Bill Hader as a hitman who ends up wanting to be an actor and insanity ensues along the way. This is one of the most underrated shows on TV right now. Season three was elite television and Bill Hader continues to prove that he's got those dramatic acting chops. Not only is he hilarious in the show, but he also can really go to some dark places. The show perfectly functions as a dark comedy. The supporting cast is loaded, but there are moments in Barry where I'm just astounded by the fact that they pulled off certain shots or just crazy episodes. And then there's those reveal scenes where I'm just like jaw on the floor, holy sh how is this happening? This show is fantastic and not enough people watch it or talk about it. So if you guys haven't seen Barry, I highly recommend it. It's on HBO Max right now. Number eight on my list is gonna be Daredevil. We got three seasons of the show on Netflix and we're actually getting a reboot coming sometime to Disney Plus in 2024, which is exciting. Hopefully it's as good as this show because the first three seasons of Daredevil are some of the best superhero television we've ever gotten. Just seeing the character of Matt Murdock as a lawyer, but a superhero at night. There's just something so intriguing about Matt Murdock being a blind lawyer who's damn good at what he does, but also is a crime fighting vigilante at night who kicks a lot of ass. This is one of the best written superhero shows. It creates tension and in season three I genuinely felt like no one was safe and that's something that the other superhero shows like the MCU ones kind of fail to do is create stakes that feel real. Like there are multiple times in the Daredevil show where Matt Murdock got his ass handed to him. He was literally brutally beaten down and I never felt safe for him and I honestly thought the hero was going to lose multiple times. That's how you know it's a well-crafted show. I'm fully invested. I love the supporting crew of characters as well. It introduces Punisher. You've got Kingpin as a phenomenal villain. Villain. Daredevil is one of the best superhero shows of all time. Number seven on my list is going to be Ozark, the Netflix original show that actually just wrapped up earlier this year. The finale was highly divisive. I know a lot of people who didn't like it. I personally really enjoyed the finale. I felt that it was fitting for our group of characters to end the way that it did. I won't spoil it, of course, if you have not seen the show. But I was so invested into Ozark, I kind of view it as my pandemic show. I started it in March of 2020 when the COVID pandemic hit, so I binged through seasons one and two in order to watch season three. And then, of course, we got season four, which is split into two parts, the final season that came out in January and April of this year. And in my opinion, Ozark is masterfully done from the performances to the direction of episodes, especially from Jason Bateman to the writing in general. Not only does this show contain shock value where I genuinely jumped out of my seat, but each character I think has a really well done arc. And I really like the way they were able to develop these characters over the course of four seasons as they just fall deeper into this money laundering life of crime. Overall, Ozark is one of my favorite shows of all time. And I really like the way that it ended. And I think it will continue to grow on me more over time. I would love to see Ozark come back one day down the road, but I doubt that will ever happen. Number six on my list is going to be The Boys, arguably the best superhero show of all time. Season three just wrapped on Amazon Prime. And all I can say about this is, it is the most brutal and offensive show I've probably ever seen when it comes to gore, sexual content, and just like overall disturbing things to watch on the screen. The Boys by far takes the top spot in all of those categories. I love how the show kind of parodies the superhero genre and the world that we live in with Marvel and DC being the talk of the town, but also it's kind of that idea of what if superheroes were real? Would they actually be chill and care about people? Or would they be these full of themselves assholes? And the show does a great job of exploring that. Anthony Starr's Homelander is one of the best TV villains of all time. 
and genuinely one of the most chillingly good performances I've ever seen on television. I love this crew of characters. The action is awesome. It's funny as hell. The show just continues to get better, especially with the addition of characters like Soldier Boy. I don't know how long it can go on. I think season four should be the last season because I don't want the show to run out of steam, but I've been really impressed with what they've done through three seasons. So before I get into my top five, make sure to hit the like button, comment down below your favorite TV shows of all time, and let's get on with this. So number five for me is going to be The Punisher, another Marvel Netflix show that is a essentially spinoff of Daredevil, and a lot of people will call me crazy because I put The Punisher above Daredevil in my personal ranking, but I just love Frank Castle so much as a character, and John Bernthal owns the role. I've got The Punisher poster right behind me. It's one of the best superhero castings of all time, and what I love about the Punisher is that this is a guy who loses everything and he is on a quest to make things right. He's a badass. He does not mess around. Season one is one of my favorite TV seasons of all time and season two is still great to me. It gets the short end of the stick but it also has a compelling kind of father-daughter relationship like Logan does um, and I'm always a sucker for that trope in movies and TV shows so I enjoy that element of it for sure. I'd rewatch the Punisher over Daredevil even though both shows are fantastic to me. Personal preference, I just like the Punisher a little bit more. Number four on my list is going to be Seinfeld. My favorite sitcom of all time. My whole life, I've watched episodes of this show here and there with my dad growing up. It would always be on TBS and I would just like watch them and I know a lot of the episodes. But more recently, I've actually started from season one and I'm working my way through it so that I can actually watch it in like chronological order, even though it really doesn't matter because Seinfeld's essentially just random occurrences every single week. But there are some cool like through lines and callbacks that I'm picking up on more now that I'm watching it chronologically in release date order, um, and I love it. It's the best sitcom of all time to me. I laugh my ass off every single time I watch an episode. It's kind of relatable situational humor. George Costanza overthinks all these things and gets himself into wild situations. Kramer being a lunatic, just making you laugh so hard. And then Jerry and Elaine as well. I love the friendship between these three. I love the wild antics that ensue every single episode. It is just pure hilarity, and it is by far, I think, the funniest show I've ever seen. Number three on my list is gonna be Game of Thrones. Look, I'm not a fan of season eight and how the show ended, but the journey with seasons one through seven is unforgettable television. We got Battle of the Bastards and the Winds of Winter to end season six. Season four, I think, is one of the best seasons of TV ever. It is so well written, and we get banger episode after banger episode to end that season. The world feels so grand. I love the plotting and early seasons of people trying to take over the Iron Throne. The action is epic as hell. We get, like, damn near Lord of the Rings level battles at times, and overall, it is just such a well-crafted show that I've rewatched multiple times. I know the episodes. I can quote it. I know the characters. I just really wish this one was able to stick the landing because if it did, it would probably be the greatest TV show of all time, but it just falls a little short because of season eight. Number two on my list is going to be Breaking Bad, a show that I absolutely adore. I've seen multiple episodes of this show more than once. I think it has the perfect finale and it's one of the few shows that really stuck the landing and had a very satisfying ending. Breaking Bad is just one of the best premises ever. It's also masterfully written. Walter White's arc from beginning to end as he kind of was this innocent teacher at first and then he ended up Breaking Bad, he ends up becoming the villain of the show. And I love Jesse Pinkman. He's probably my favorite character in the entire show. But you've got a number of remarkable side characters from Saul Goodman to Gustavo Fring, aka Gus, to Mike. I mean, the list goes on and on. It is such a well-crafted show. Vince Gilligan knocked it out of the park. And I really liked El Camino. I thought it was a solid epilogue. I still haven't watched Better Call Saul. That'll probably be on my next top 10 because I'm sure I'm going to love it. I just got to give it the time of day and sit down and binge through Better Call Saul. But coming in at number one for me should be no surprise. Stranger Things is my favorite TV show of all time, especially after season four being as epic as it was. We got volume one, seven episodes, and volume two, which was two episodes, the finale being two hours and 20 minutes, a full-ass movie, and it was one of the most epic things I've ever seen. It's probably my favorite piece of media I've consumed in the year 2022. Stranger Things is a perfect TV show to me. Each season kind of builds and adds something that makes the show even more interesting. It's got action, humor, heart, callbacks to the 80s, sci-fi vibes, horror vibes, and it just makes me feel so comfortable when I watch the show. It makes me feel nostalgic inside. I grew up with the show, essentially, and I feel like I grew up with these characters, so I'm so deeply attached to, like, almost 10 or more characters in the show. I watched the first season when it came out when I was a junior in high school, and now I'm much older, and it feels weird saying this out loud, but, like, I have grown up with them, and I'm going to be really devastated when the show ends, probably in 2024, but the show just got me to care so much about the characters and the storylines. And in my life, it's like the first true cultural event show that I followed from the beginning. Like Game of Thrones, I hopped on later. Like when Stranger Things season one came out back in July of 2016, I watched it on Netflix and I've watched every season since then. So it's been a massive part of my life for years and being able to add to the conversation, especially in season four, because I wasn't on social media for the other seasons, really is special. Stranger Things has just been an outstanding show from day one. I'm so deeply invested into this world and the characters. I truly 
love the show, and uh, it will probably always be my favorite TV show of all time. I trust the Duffer Brothers to stick the landing. I think that it will really deliver. But that's going to do it for my updated top 10 favorite TV shows of all time. Again, let me know yours in the comments down below. Is Stranger Things on your list? Is it not? Let me know. I'm actually starting up a new series called Return to Hawkins coming very soon, where I revisit every single episode of Stranger Things and talk about it. It's going to be a lot of fun, a weekly series. I also have some Stranger Things merch you guys can check out. Link down below. Use code STRANGER at checkout for 20% off your entire order. But other than that, I got tons of videos coming soon. Feel free to follow me on all my other social medias. There's a link down below. And until next time, I'll see you guys later.